All right, Bulls and Beers, it's Monday, September 9th, 2024. A lot to get into. So much is happening. A lot of things are on the brink. Let's let's call it that. But we've got the rate cut that's being looked at by uh, investors, mainly the mega rich and the ones that control and own about 90% of the stock market. They'll decide the direction of the market. When they start selling off, the market will go down. If they buy, the market goes up. That's what happens when you have the market controlled by a small fraction of the population, the top 10%. Uh, anyways, let's go ahead and get into it here. The markets, the rate cut. Uh, we've got some celebrity news to hit. We'll cover that at the end. We've got some reality TV stars possibly facing foreclosure. And I just like to dip into the lifestyles of the rich and famous uh, news a bit because it's such an illusion. Some of these people, some of these uh, TV stars that have been on TV for years, uh, when you look at their economic reality, uh, what you see is usually not what you get. And a lot of times uh, they're buried in debt. And we've all heard the stories about celebrities that couldn't pay their taxes and got foreclosed and had financial problems and all kinds of things. But we'll get into that here. But first of all, a lot happening again. The, the biggest rate cut possibly in 16 years is right in front of us here. Uh, if they do the half a percent uh, rate cut. Now, to me, it's insane that we're even talking about rate cuts right now with the inflation numbers. But remember, the Fed, the powers that be, uh, they've convinced the population through the media that inflation is back to where it needs to be. But we don't need inflation back where it needs to be. We need, and it doesn't need to be there, we need deflation. Remember, price levels are too high. Home prices are all-time worst unaffordability or all-time best, whichever way you want to look at it. So all-time high unaffordability is all-time low affordability. So whichever term you want to look at, it's uh, homes are out of reach now uh, more than any time ever in the history of the United States, including the housing bubble 2008. At the peak, it wasn't even as bad as it was now. But yet we're talking about we need to cut rates because inflation is down. Uh, folks, what a scam, what a joke, uh, whatever way you want to look at it here. Uh, let's talk about this here. And here's how they put it in one of the mainstream articles here. The Fed won't push the panic button and go for a jumbo rate cut, economist says. And I agree. I mean, what would a half a percent rate cut actually tell the market? So it would tell them that the Fed is worried and it would have people asking the question, what do they know? What do they see? On the horizon quote we're not seeing anything that i can imagine in the data that's going to trigger the fed to do what i would call a panicked 50 basis point rate cut that's carl weinberg uh chief economist of high frequency economists uh, i just wanted to pull that out because uh, i agree with with him uh, what would that signal can you imagine a 50 basis point rate cut a half a percent or something higher uh something higher with with price levels where they're at it seems like even the average joe or jane uh, would start connecting the dots here. Why aren't people more concerned about what's being looked at here with the rate cut, with, with again, price levels where they're at? People going further, most people anyway, going further into debt. Every month we look at the data, it continues to get worse. People getting deeper and deeper into the red. But some other news to get caught up on here. Um, we want to get into the uh, stock markets here. Let's look at the Dow Jones. Right, and the Dow Jones is just what 20 companies, so really the SP 500 should be where we're going to focus. But we're going to look at the Dow Jones first here, and we see that it uh, looks like a double top here, and we're down to 40,533. Remember the peak, we got up to about 41,600, somewhere around there. But jumping on over here to the SP 500, a much more important and um, storytelling index, in my opinion, here, uh, we didn't actually beat the high that we saw back in July with this other, uh, what I think looks like a double top here. Uh, late August, we hit, what, 5,665. But in July, we're up to 5,714. And now we're down to 5,440. Of course, the market's probably open. As you're watching this, it's changed because I'm recording this on uh, actually Sunday night, which is uh, September 8th. Uh, but either way, I think that's an interesting pattern. And now with the jitters in the markets, uh, what's going to happen uh, in the following days and weeks, right? It's going to be very interesting to say the least. 
But here's how people are feeling here and uh, not very confident. People are jittery. Here's the way that they put it in uh, Market Watch. Jittery home buyers want the election to be over before they make their move. Quote, nobody knows what's going to happen. So why would you make your home buying decision on who's going to win in November? Right? Is it going to matter? Is either person or either candidate or the, whoever the winner is, are they going to let the housing bubble go bust? Uh, not without something big to blame it on. Remember, inflation, they blamed it on the health crisis what, four, over four years ago now. They're still blaming it on the health crisis. I heard the other day a, a speech and they said, oh, inflation went up because of uh, what happened four years ago in 2020. Okay, if that was the cause, it's been gone now for years. Why has inflation, I shouldn't say why has it went down because it's slightly slowed, but why haven't price levels come down? That's what people should be asking. Uh, but does it make a difference to you? I mean, let me know uh, who wins in November. Does that matter to you? Um, is it really going to make that much of a difference? Um, you could say that some of their policies, uh, which they do uh, have opposite sides on some of these policies, but will that affect the housing market? Will it affect the stock market? Right? Um, I don't think so. Uh, I think it's just going to be uh, inflate, inflate, inflate. Until something massive happens, again, Black Swan, 2020, 2.0, another pandemic, uh, something worse, act of war, an outage, a glitch, uh, the entire grid going down, something like that, you know, on the level of a 2020 type of thing to stop these, um, these prices from going up. But then what's the response going to be, right? So we see something big that causes panic and brings the market down. What's the response going to be? Look at 2020. The markets came down. Everything was frozen for a while. But then what happened? They pumped so much money into the economy with the stimulus checks, uh, the get out of jail free cards, all the support programs, the cancellations of rents and foreclosures, all those things led to the inflation. See, that's what they don't want to admit. They, they just want to blame the health crisis. What it is, it wasn't the health crisis. It was the response to the crisis. Right. And some people wouldn't say it's even a crisis. Some people say it's a big um, you know, scam. But the response is what really caused price levels slash inflation to spike. But again, nobody's talking about that. I think I might be the only one talking about that. Let's move on here, though. Uh, quick story here. Wall Street Journal. The video game maker is under some pretty severe stress. Making video games was a dream career. And then mass layoffs came. Downsizing has become rampant in an industry that many turned their passion into employment. I thought that sounded like a cool occupation to make video games or test video games. Uh, but these people are either being replaced by AI. Um, is the demand just dropping off so much for people purchasing video games that that's the reason for the layoffs? Well, it's a combination of both. Uh, some people say it's all AI. Well, AI, AI has been around for a while. Yes, it's become much more advanced here in the last few years. But if you don't look at the state of the consumer, uh, how people have so much debt right now, and yes, they're still running up debt. They're doing things. Uh, a lot of people still traveling. You see record holiday travel still. People are still shopping online, Amazon trucks all over the place, wherever you look. <laughs> um, but uh, certain things people are cutting out. And uh, we talked about the cable, uh, the cable cutting going on here. Massive uh, exodus from cable TV. Some people say they're just going to the apps or the uh, the Roku uh, sticks to watch their uh, TVs or watch their programs rather. But those apps are losing business too. A lot of them. I mean, Netflix is still pretty strong, but a lot of them are losing customers as well. So it's across the board with the exception of a couple, again, like Netflix. But some people I see down in the comments, they say, well, no, it's not that. It's People aren't cutting their cable because they're in a lot of debt. They're cutting it because of the apps. Well, why are the apps uh, and these uh, some of these movie streaming um, uh, apps, you know, they're losing customers as well. So let me know what you think about that down in the comments, folks. But yeah, the video game industry, video games, something that is seeing a, uh, a pullback. And I think it's a lot to do uh, with the debt levels amongst uh, so many consumers right now. Let's move on to a little bit of celebrity news. We have some uh, TV stars, uh, MTV stars, what, Teen Mom, Caitlin 
and Tyler. Um, they're on the verge of foreclosure now. Home sounds like it's been in and out of foreclosure or in and out of risk of foreclosure. They were on the brink for a while. They were trying to sell the home. Uh, they took the home off the market recently, $433,000 home in Michigan. Uh, they reportedly failed to pay taxes on the house, leaving them at risk of major financial troubles. Here's a show that's been on for years on MTV, so you would think they would be pretty well off. Um, here's their picture for those of you that you know don't watch the show. My wife used to watch it. Uh, here's their house, and they've got this pool addition on there. It's a pretty big house. Uh, pool in Michigan, that's just, you can really only use it like half of the year. And during the winter, what do you do? Do you drain it? And turn it into a skate ramp. Well, there's too much ice for that, ice and snow. So you can't do that. So pretty much out of use half of the year. Anyways, I digress. Couple listed their octagonal home in Michigan for more than four hundred thousand in 2023, but took it off the market after it failed to sell amid financial troubles for the couple, folks. And these are TV stars. Uh, sorry, I was going through this without <laughs> without showing it. Here they are, and here's the home. And here's the pool. Uh, MTV, right? You would think they'd have a little bit of extra money, especially living in Michigan, which is not the most expensive state. 433000 You could have bought a home in California uh, for 433000 just what, six years ago, seven years ago. I um, mean, you still can now. It'd be a major fixer upper, but um, pretty interesting, I thought, you know, with the celebrity um, situation here with a lot of celebrities really in some financial trouble and i'll try to bring you more of this if you like this please let me know because uh, i think it's a very telling thing when you see these uh stars some people would say they're stars but if you've been on mtv you've been seen by millions of people i would say that's a star all right let's move on here to the wealth gap or the wealth transfer as many would call it with the rich continuing to get richer but with the poor the middle class included and now up to 70 percent of people uh basically getting poorer if you look at the state of the debt levels. The debt is getting higher and savings are getting lower for most people. Here's how Michael Hartnett put it. Um, let me just read you his uh, job title here. And this was reported out of The Hedge. He is the chief investment strategist for B of A Merrill Lynch Global Research. He says the economy has never been more polarized. Quote, the rich and he uses the Ferrari stock as an example, the car, uh, is at an all-time high versus the poor uh, Dollar General at a six-year low. So you would think the dollar stores, or in this case, it doesn't sell everything for a dollar, but the Dollar General, the low-cost stores, the budget stores, you would think those stores would be booming right now with so many people looking for a bargain. But people are so tapped out that we've got the, do the dollars, Stores going out of business. Well, the 99 cent store in this case, Dollar Tree, Dollar General, are they struggling? Yes, yeah, six year low, according to him. Just going to check his, um, what he's saying here, bring up Ferrari stock here. Ferrari stock. Wow, look at this. $470. Uh, go out to a maximum chart here. Started off at $46 in 2015, up to 470 so basically, uh, you could have 10 times your money if you would have gotten into that stock. Here's a stock I would actually consider uh, betting against here. We did see a slight pullback here. So he's not right that it's at an all-time high, but it's near an all-time high. So uh, pullback here recently. But that looks like a chart here that I would like to go against, especially at these current time, the current state of the economy right now uh, with all the risks out there and uh, everything else happening. Here's something though I wanted to put out there, the debt situation. The debt we often hear about is the national debt. And right now it's about um, 35 trillion and counting, of course. What you don't hear about, what they don't tell you about is the real debt, which is the total debt. And it's now folks get ready for at 101 trillion. This is the total debt, includes household, business, state and local governments, financial institutions, and the actual federal government, folks, $101 trillion. And yet future generations and, and the young in this country are supposed to pay this off uh, with their labor, uh, paying, paying it off, you know, part of their paycheck being taken. Uh, folks, it's never going to happen. 
Uh, and that's the definition of bankruptcy. Look at the budget deficit. The country continues to go further in debt. And um, the only way that things have not collapsed is because they can continually create more money out of thin air. All right, once that stops, then it's game over. Everything crashes, everything collapses. Um, but now we are feeling the effect of the continuous money creation and continuous debt accumulation uh, with the cost of living, right? And we see this happen. And uh, in this case, the bubble is just allowed to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, and I say this often because it's so true. If, if they did in 2008 what we're doing today, that bubble would have never bursted. That recession or financial crisis would have never happened. If the banks were propped up like they are now, that financial crisis would have never happened. If the government back then was buying most of the mortgages like we're doing now, the housing bubble would have never went bust, right? All these things happening, the, the, the programs, the assistance, the down payment assistance, uh, the banks, the way they're being handled with the FDIC completely changing the rules last year in 2023, where it used to be if you had more than $250,000, you weren't covered. Remember what happened in March 2023? They covered the people that had billions of dollars, billions with a B. So not only did they not cap it at the 250000 which was every, what everybody thought up until then, they went into the billions of dollars and created the money to reimburse the billionaires that lost their money in the main example would be Silicon Valley Bank, folks, right? Again, unprecedented actions here over the past few years. And it's ongoing, unprecedented. Again, if this would have happened, this type of um, propping up of the system and the and the bailouts of the billionaires, all these things uh, would have happened. The financial crisis, if this would have been implemented in 2008, the financial crisis would have never happened. It would have been inflation like we're seeing now, but uh, you wouldn't have saw the crash. The housing market wouldn't have come down. Prices wouldn't have corrected. But that's the cure to the illness. We need a correction. So we're just giving uh, the sick person, um, you know, more fever reducers, but we're not actually allowing the fever to go away. It's just being masked by, in this case, money creation. So a better example would be, I think, an alcoholic. I think I've heard a few people say it like this, that the alcoholic, he needs to come off the alcohol. There's going to be some withdrawals. He's going to be very sick. He might even um, not make it uh, through withdrawals. But instead of allowing the withdrawals and putting them in a home somewhere, a recovery center, um, they're giving them more alcohol every day. So that's what it is, folks. And the, uh, you know, the liver's not going to take much more in this case. Uh, in this case, most consumers not going to take much more. So we're at a breaking point. And some people say, oh, you always say that. You always say it's next week, next month. Well, it depends on who you ask. If you ask most people, I think they would tell you that they're at the breaking point or beyond the breaking point. Um, but then again, you're not seeing the fallout like you normally would at these uh, current debt levels because of all the propping up, the rescue programs, everything else. Now we're talking about rate cuts, right? Another way to just keep this illusion going for a little bit longer, a lot longer. Um, and then back to the beginning, what we talked about at the beginning, will a big rate cut like 50 basis points or half a percent, will that be more of a panic thing? Then it will a relief thing, right? So there's there's speculation on both um, outcomes, or that both outcomes are either one, right? Will it be too much of a rate cut and will that cause confidence to be lost? Or will it be looked at as lower rates are here, it's a relief, now we can carry this debt a little bit longer, right? Which I think is ridiculous, but maybe that's what I was going to play out here. Again, nobody knows, right? If anybody knew uh, exactly uh, they'd be the king of the world if they knew exactly how this was going to play out. Uh, but we can definitely prepare for uh, both situations, prepare for this bubble to continue to get bigger. Uh, but then again, I've never seen the black swan risk as high as I do now. Remember in 2019, I said something's right around the corner. Look what happened in 2020 for those long-term bulls and bears that have been on this channel. You know, we're probably one of the only channels to actually call that, especially with... Um, what was happening back then in 2020, which is happening this year in November. You know what I'm talking about? So be ready for something big. As always, keep stacking, folks. Let me know what you think about all this down in comments. We're going to wrap this one up. Bye for now.
Peace.